Hello and welcome to this tutorial with me, Rory, from Hyper Production. I'm here today with Sonic Academy to bring you this tutorial on how to mix kick and bass. Firstly, what I'm going to do is show this tune that we've got in this tutorial, just to give you a bit of context of what we're working with, and then I'll explain a little bit about what we're going to do here today. So here we go. So there we have it. I just want to start off firstly by saying that this technique that I'm going to show you here today is just one of a few ways that you can mix your kicks and your bass. It does differ from tune to tune, however, in this particular case, this technique has been used on 99% of the stuff that I do and it very rarely lets me down. So in case you find any other tutorials and you're thinking like, well, that's not how that guy did it, it will differ. So don't panic, however, this one will give you a great starting point. So I'll just explain a bit about what's going on in the arrangement window. Here we have our bass in the middle. At the top, we've got our kick. For the kick, we're using Sonic Academy's very own Kick 2. It's a great plugin, I highly recommend it. You can attenuate your pitch, your amp, and you can also customize the various clicks to basically customize your initial transient. For the preset, we're using the TR909 and the second one in, in that preset bank. So I'll show you that quickly. So we have it nice and punchy and a fair bit of low end to that as well. So you probably notice here we've got our bass reference. So that's the original bass audio file, that, loop file, sorry, that we have. And then below we split it into the sub and the top. And I'll explain a little bit about why we've done that in a second. We want to keep the bass reference because what we're going to do with the second channel is we're going to compare it to the original one because we need it to sound as like the original as possible. So I'm going to start over again here. I'm going to totally delete that. And then I'm going to delete that also. And then I'm going to click on this track. I'm going to duplicate that twice. I'm going to name this one bass sub. And then we're going to name this one bass top. Then we're simply just going to copy and paste these loop regions over. Then we're going to head over to this bass sub. We're going to head down to our Fab Filter Pro Q2. I absolutely love this plugin. It's my go-to EQ plugin. It sounds amazing. So and obviously this is the sub, so we want to put a low pass or a high cut, however you want to call it. And we're going to bring this down to probably about 80. We're going to set the high cut, we're going to set it to 24 dB, and then we're going to put the Q to probably about, probably say about one. So probably leave it about there. Then for the bass top, again, we're getting out our trusty Pro-Q2. And then we're going to obviously do the reverse. So we want a high pass, but a low cut. Again, however you wish to name it. And then for this one, frequency, probably going to put to about 100. And then the Q, probably going to put to about 0 0.5. And then again, we'll put the 24 dB on there. That should give us a good starting point. So the easy way to reference between two different tracks within the arrangement window in Logic Pro 10 is if you hold down Alt and then click those and then, sorry, Shift and then hold down both of those. And then to flick between those two going on and off, like in terms of the mutes or the solos, you simply hold down Option and then it will do both of those at the same time. And then likewise, if you want to then reference the original bass, you hold down Option, click Mute and it will switch between. So that's a dead easy way to reference the two. So let's have a little listen between those two. So what we'll do, we'll mute those two first and then we'll switch it on throughout the other bits. Okay, I'm gonna switch the auto set locators off because that is rather annoying. So here we go. Thank you. 
I think we are pretty darn close with that one. I'm really happy with that, so I'm going to leave it and I'm not going to touch it. So, what we're going to do then, this is where sort of the magic happens. The low end, what we're going to do, we're actually going to side chain against the kick. So you can kind of picture it now that you're still hearing the top end of the bass, the low mids, the mids, and the slight high end that you might have on it. And then we're going to be side chaining the sub, which you're not really going to notice that much. So this is what sort of music and production is all about. You're not going to get everything scientifically bang on or something like that. As long as it sounds like that and it's your masking sounds and it's, it's appearing that the bass is very apparent, there's no side chain available, perfect, that's all you need. So for the side chain, what I'm going to be using is Xfer's LFO tool. So this plugin is just a really quick and easy way to get some quick side chain on there. I only sort of recommend it on stuff that's more housey and sort of four to the floor because when you start side chaining stuff that's maybe a bit syncopated or a bit off, off rhythm, um, it's not really going to save you that much. So let's just solo that sub bass and let's have a listen. Another little tip for this plugin as well, if you've got this side of it on this, what I'm dragging up, up and down now, if you've got all the way there, you will hear some clicking. Okay, so the easy way to combat that is just bring it back ever so slightly. And then there you have it, you've eliminated that. Okay, so then we're gonna bring that down quite far down because we can actually attenuate this you know, however much we want because you're not going to be hearing it that much. You're only gonna be able to sort of like feel it but then because we've got this top base carrying the flag, essentially, we're going to be good to go. So then let's have a listen with those two together. Okay, and then what we're going to do is probably just bring out that top end ever so slightly. Probably do it, give it a little bit more presence around the 2.5k mark. Okay, perfect. So then let's have a listen to that within the track. Okay, we are pretty much there. What I'm going to do is just turn up this lower one a bit there, turn down the sub slightly, and then what we're going to do is bring up both of those quite nicely together. You do want to keep your bases mono, so what I'm going to do there is I'm actually going to keep the top one sort of stereo because I feel like the sample does have a slight sort of open upness at the top end of the frequencies, but the sub we can most certainly keep mono. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, and then let's have a little listen with the original bass in there. So hold out the two, hold down option, mute those, and then you've got your original bass open. Okay, so I think we're pretty much there, and that's if you sort of follow that technique on various bases. I'm sure that you will find a sweet spot. It does take a little bit of tweaking, as I say, because it will differ from tune to tune. If you've particularly got quite a subby kick, then you're obviously going to want to attenuate the sub on your bass line. Probably make the bass to lower mids a little bit more apparent. I hope you've learned something in this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.